Welcome to another Tech Help Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to take a look at the set focus command and how you can use it to improve your form control navigation in Microsoft Access. This, of course, is a developer level video. So what does that mean? That means we're going to be using some VBA programming. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll get you started. Teaches you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. Okay, so the set focus command allows you to move the focus to a control of your choice. Right now, for example, the first name field has focus. Now the last name field has focus. That's what the focus is. It's wherever the cursor is sitting. Now this is handy for a couple of different reasons. One, it helps you to improve navigation. And another is it assists you with validating input. For example, let's say, hypothetically, that before you can put an order in for a customer, they have to have a credit limit. Let's say you always work with credit limits and if a customer has no credit limit or if their credit limit is negative or whatever, then you can't put an order in them. And I want the order button to say, hey, this customer doesn't have a credit limit with a message box and then to help them out, put the cursor in the credit limit box, the text box. That's how set focus works. So we'll go to design view. I'll edit the code for my button, build event, right click. And before we do the open form, we'll put a little validation here. We'll say if is null credit limit or credit credit limit is less than or equal to zero, then we'll message box this customer does not have a credit limit or it's negative. I worked for a client that when they, they their old database wasn't very flexible. So if the customer didn't have credit, and they didn't want to leave it at zero, meaning that they weren't sure if he had the credit or not, they would put it at negative one, <laughs> which says that, yes, we know this customer has bad credit. <laughs> Whereas the default for that field was zero, which meant they might not have put a credit app in. Anyways, I digress. So now at this point, you've notified the user, hey, the customer doesn't have a credit limit or it's negative. What do you do? Well, we're going to say credit limit dot set focus. All these things after the dot menu, those are all, well, most of them are methods or properties. A method is you're going to do something like set focus, or you can see there a size to fit, right? Whereas those other things, there are properties, properties of the text box, like show date picker. Do I show the date picker? That kind of stuff. We're focused on set focus right now. So set focus. Okay. Now you could either exit sub here or make it an else if I choose to exit sub, because at this point we know we want to get out of here. Whereas if I make this an else and then do command open form, you never know if maybe later on in the future, you might add stuff after that and, not, and forget that it's got to exit right here. So I like the exit sub here. Okay. All right. Debug compile once in a while. Come back out here. We're going to close everything down and save changes. Yes. And open it back up again. And now I'm going to hit orders and it says, oh, the customer does not have a credit limit or it's negative. Hit okay. And set focus puts the cursor right there, making it easier for the user to type something in. Okay. Another use might be to aid in navigation on the form. Let's say you've got different options that may or may not be filled in depending on the user's preference. Let's say in addition to family size, we've got a field called number of children. In fact, let's add it to the table. Customer T design view. I'll add a field in here called num children. We'll make that a number, All right? We'll make the default value zero. That's fine. Go to the customer form and let's add that field in here. Copy paste. We'll stick it right under family size, right? We'll call this num children. And we'll make this equal to, we'll, we'll make the control source num children. That means that's where it's getting and saving its data. We're also gonna copy that and paste it in the name. So the text box's name is the same as the control source. I like to do that in most cases. Also, let's put it in the, in the tab order in the right spot. I want it to tab after family size right to num children. So we're gonna go to form design. Tab order, we're going to find num children and we're going to slide it up under family size, just like that. And I got videos on all this stuff. If you don't know what I'm doing right now with the tab order, I'll put links to it down below. All right, so let's save it, close it, open it back up again. Now here I am in family size. Now if I type in five, you might, you know, you could assume that they got three or maybe four children, you don't know, but let's say I type in one. Well, I, you know, if I'm obviously dealing with adults, then you know number of children's got to be zero. So in this case, we can use set focus to just skip by that and tab straight to customer sense. Now, I know this seems trivial right now, but I've dealt with clients before who had some pretty complicated forms that their people had to fill out all day long. And it was very, very handy for them 
to be able to skip fields based on what was entered in previous things. Like if you're doing an application for credit or any kind of stuff like that, you might want to skip whole sections depending on what data is entered in the form. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if family size is one, we're going to skip right by a number of children and go right to customer sense using set focus. Where do we do that? We put that in the after update event. After update fires when this value is changed, right? I got a whole separate video on that. I'll put a link down below. And we're going to come in here, hit the builder button. That'll bring back our code builder. Come here. Where'd you go? There you are. All right. And here we're going to say, if family, si family size equals one, then we're going to skip the field. We're going to say customer sense dot set focus. I can't type today, folks. I apologize. Else customer or num children dot set focus. You could just exit sub here or put that end if there because it's next in the tab order. But just in case the user later on, you know, moves fields around or whatever, you want to force where it's going after they finish entering in family size. Save it. Come back out here. And now I'll put in a four and it goes to number of children. However, if I come up here and type in one, it skips it and goes to customer sense. See that? You can even do all kinds of things like disable the box, make it gray. Uh, there's lots of different options. But today we're focused on set focus. If you want to learn more about message box, if then, is null, tab order, after update, any of the topics that I talked about in today's class, I've got more videos available. Look in the description down below the video and you'll find links to all of those. Now, there is another command called go to control that is very similar to set focus, but it has some unique properties of its own. We're going to talk about that in tomorrow's class, but that is your tech help fast tip video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13 time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guide. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? 
The whole thing. Free. Four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.